Hello, we're here with Bobby Tucker, who is running for Seattle mayor. Uh, would you like to go ahead with your two minute introduction? Uh, yes, well, my name is Bobby Tucker. I'm uh, running for Seattle mayor. I'm um, a Christian first, I'm a man of God, uh, love God. Uh, as uh, I'm a family also is 17 of us. I'm the, uh, the fifth son uh, and the 11th child. Well, no, the ninth child. So I'm from Marshall, Texas. Uh, originally, I uh, came in from Austin, went to Seattle, but I, I went to Houston Tillerson College, then now it's named Houston Tillerson University. I transferred here. I was invited here by my cousin to come check out Seattle. And I did, and I so I transferred to Seattle University. I'm an author, uh, I wrote the book, and people say, what's the title of your book? The title of it, I say it's personal. When they Google it, bibljtucker.com, they see this, oh, it is personal. Because I write personal poetry for people, spiritual poetry. Um, I'm a father, single father, um, and love being a father. And uh, I'm running for mayor because I care. Great, thank you. Uh, so now we'll move into the prepared questions and I will place a copy of those into the chat um, one at a time. And the responses to these are one minute apiece. And uh, let's go ahead and start with Mackenzie. Sure, give me one second here. Okay. Um, what specific actions will you take to address the homelessness crisis in Seattle, both in the short term and in the long term? And can you please address uh, subjects such as land use, zoning, revenue, regional collaboration, the role of social services, the role of the police and justice in the justice system, all for examples? Well, what I would do uh, first for the short term is, uh, View the, uh, view the situation we already, which I've, I've already have. I was homeless myself once. And I think that uh, we have a lot of empty buildings now, schools uh, and other buildings because of the pandemic, even before then, uh, they have like the school building and all the other buildings, they already have restrooms, they have rooms, they have uh, the schools, they have kitchens. And I think that once we, you know, get the caseworkers to go around and, and survey the building, how we could come to, because I believe, I don't know everything, but I believe together we can do this. And we go to each one of those. Once we got that, whatever building a building is, we have to choose to uh, place people in, is uh, they have a caseworker, see their situation, get a great team, see they, each one situation, and, and, and start from there. And then uh, with that, I think with the long term is, you know, we uh, uh, bus people to Amazon, to Boeing's, you know, and uh, to you know, other uh, Facebook, they all have, and these people can afford their transportation. But I think people, when we got other jobs that's way out in Redmond, uh, Kent and warehouse jobs and others, I think we should, these people really can't afford their transportation, <clears throat> but those who, we do shuttle to these big corporations making six figures. We should do that for the people that are homeless. I believe, uh, and people, uh, all they need is we treat people like humans. And so that would be that uh, for that. And you said about policing, right? Yeah, po well, policing, I believe, what they go through, they go through like a six months uh, training thing. I was an officer, not a police officer, but I've been in security for officer for a long time. I've trained with them. I, I uh, you know, I just believe that before they go out to the streets, I think they should do it like a two year of uh, social work, you know, so they can have a better relationship with people and understand people. That's what I would do with the police. I think I would look at their background. We we have to look and see what, they, what their, uh, if there had been any complaints on them and uh you know their track record Great. and uh what was the other one? Oh, that well that's time on that one uh let's go ahead and move to question okay. number two Sorry. um that's okay <laughs> that's okay uh let's see question number two and 
Let's see, I have Katie. Great. Um, what is your strategy for creating dense and diverse neighborhoods and assuring affordable housing? How would you work to dismantle systemic racist arrangements like redlining, including but not limited to exclusionary zoning land and land use policies? Do you support and would you sign city legislation to end single family zoning as Berkeley, California recently did? Well, I mean, I would definitely end uh, redlining and uh, and when you start talking about diversity of, of uh, because the laws and the things have already been written. I just think the thing that has been debated just needs to be enforced. Uh, when we've been denied, uh, uh, you know, uh, how uh, about and so I don't think there's nothing needs to be created new. But I do believe that uh, uh, together we can make this thing, uh, you know, work for everybody. Because there's enough for everybody. Seattle is a very, very uh, rich uh, city, and um, it's uh, can definitely, uh, as long as the people are not being denied. Because I look at things like when people are applying for asylum here in the U.S. You know, these people, once they, once the asylum is approved, approved, get like a tent, you know, they get apartment, they get a house, they get money, they get loans for businesses and everything. And I just believe we should take care of home first. Great, thank you. Uh, question number three. And let me go back over here. Sherry, if you could take that one. Um, would you decrease the Seattle Police Department budget? And if so, by approximately what percentage? What is your, I, hang on, yeah. one more. these are three part question. What is your plan for the city's fog negotiations? And do you support and will you advocate for ending qualified immunity for law enforcement? Yes, I would. Uh, in uh, qualified immunity for law enforcement because I just believe, you know, uh, we uh, hire these people that's supposed to trust us. We're all supposed to be safe, you know, and they can holler all lives matters. Of course, all lives matter. But why, why would they even have to be a statement saying black lives matter? Because something, happen, something is happening or Asian people who are being abused and taking advantage of any of us. So all of us matters. So let's treat each other like all of us matters. And so no, I would definitely uh, go against, you know, for uh, cops to be protected by something that they did wrong. And what was your other part of that question? Uh, the first part was, would you decrease the Seattle Police Department budget? And if so, uh, by approximately what percentage? You know, uh, I don't know if increase, well, that's not increase. I don't know if decreasing will solve the problem. But yeah, I would. If, 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 if decreasing is going to put more social workers on the, uh, on the streets versus the uh, versus, uh, a police officer is going to a situation. I would probably. I'm. I'm. I would start off with twenty percent. That's what I would start off with. Great, thank you. And the last part, I think it was, uh, what is your plan for the city's um, Seattle Police Officer Officer Guild negotiations? I don't know if you heard that one. I haven't, but uh, I have to look more into that. Because uh, I'm not up to date on that, you know. Mm -hmm. Great. But um, but if it's got something to do with their union, uh, yeah, you know, it's yeah, well, well. I, I I mean because by all means that's let me tell you this at least by training and going with officers and things they do things and it's sad to say and of course we always got good people bad people good officers and bad officers when they do something wrong there their action is already premeditated. I'm talking about they're, 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 if they do something wrong, they got a premeditated answer for it. I mean, I've, I've been behind the closed doors. And 
just gonna let you know that. Great, thank you. Um, on question number four, um, let's see here, uh, Laura. How will you prioritize transportation infrastructure for biking, pedestrians, public transit, commercial vehicles, and cars? Which do you view as most important to prioritize funds for? I would say uh, the, um, I would say the, uh, the transit system because of, uh, you know, with uh, the city expanding, like from Bellevue, I know right here off of I-90 and uh, Rainier, they got a, a big station just, you know, uh, I don't know the exact date that's supposed to be completed. And also even going to uh, West Seattle there. It, well, it's really massive because we even got, uh, you know, uh, the uh, transit coming, I think coming from Redmond. We already got it going to, uh, 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 da, 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 almost to Tacoma, but I know right now it's in federal way. So yeah, it would be the transit that would be my first priority. You know, and again, because of the highways and less traffic and more people uh, getting to, uh, to work. Great, thank you. Uh, so now we'll move into uh, questions from the board and we'll open it up to them. Uh, they can raise their hands um, to ask these. The follow-ups um, are, the responses to these would be one minute a piece. And um, we can go ahead and get started on that. Sherry, go ahead. Hi, um, could you tell me like one or two things or maybe three, whatever, um, that you would do differently than what our current mayor is doing or has done? Well, what I would do, I would definitely uh, be committed and I would, you know, have a great connection with the people and really follow through. Uh, because the thing that people are voting for, I've been there too. You know, I've, I've been homeless. I've been uh, discriminated against. I've been uh, you know, I've been taken advantage of, you know, and being a single father, it's just, just so much uh, that I think that could have been done that wasn't. And we need to really, really listen to the people and be involved and have hands-on. That's what I would definitely do different. I want to be involved and have hands-on. Right there walking arms and arms with you, you know, and making sure because, you know, again, that people are not denied housing. I mean, I've been denied, even if I want a voucher or something, and still was, I mean, I mean, I mean, what to win one? Then you win one and still denied? Come on. Great, thank you. Any other follow-ups? I have one that was uh, submitted by uh, a member of our district and theirs was, what is your approach to management and leadership? Well, you know, I told you I'm a Christian and uh, mm -hmm. I would go with like the book of Nehemiah. And when Nehemiah heard about the, about the wall being broken down, he said how he fasted and prayed and wept. And I'm just gonna be sincere with you. And what I would do with leadership is get good leaders, people that are sincere about people, a good team and say, you know, and, and, and he said, hey, the people had a mind to work. Let us get a group of people, because I don't know everything, but the team, we can do this. In 1969, we sent rockets to the moon and men's on the moon. So God has created us to be brilliant people. You know, we can do anything we want to do if we want to do it. I mean, we build infrastructure, like we talked about transportation a while ago. We build tunnels, trains, planes. I mean, anything we want to do, we can do it. It's just, we have to want to do it. And we can do this. We can do this. And just like Nehemiah, again, I just love that story. They got together, they built the walls, even though they have those opposition, don't have those intimidation people coming or those threats, but long as they stuck with praying to God and stuck together, they did it. Great. Thank you. Any further questions? 
All right, I have one from uh, the 36 districts uh, environmental committee um, and there's were uh, how would you use your office to address climate justice, um, which would ensure a healthy environment and access to climate supporting solutions. I'm glad that's an easy question. I would, I would just invite the experts in <laughs> and say, show me the way and what you guys have, because I know the data and information is already there. So that's what I would definitely do about that, to be honest with you. So that would be one of my teams, you know, like, hey, who, who's the expert here? And let's invite her, him or them in and say, what do we need to do? What do you need my support on? And I'm, and I'm willing to listen. Thank you so much. Any further questions from the board? So I have a whole, a whole, a whole slew of questions that people submitted. So <laughs> um, let's see. I think the next question that I have is about single family zoning. Um, and uh, it says here that. Uh, I guess there was a bill that came across the mayor's desk before that ended single family zoning citywide. Um, and it had, uh, they would, they're wondering, would that be something you, you would vote for? Um, you know, how do you feel about single family zoning? Uh, like again, what the people want, but yeah, I would vote for uh, single family zoning. Great. Uh, let's see here. And then, so how would you work with uh, neighboring cities? You know, sharing information, what's working for you, you know, what will work for us, because that's what it is, I think. It's just like, let's just go there for a second. How, you know, we came up, our scientists came up with the, uh, with the vaccine, the Pfizer and uh, of course, the J and J and the um, Moderna. Uh, it's, then they don't want to share information. That's what's happening. We should. I mean, we we should share what works for us all. You know, why hide it? Why hold it? I mean, if this is working for you, hey, share this. Share this information. So that's how it works. You know, if this working for you, hey, this what I. This is what's working for us. Uh, and and then of course, coming together. That's where. Uh, we succeed at together, not single. Especially the prior uh, suburbs, you know, I mean, we all back and forth to each other's suburbs. Or, or as a city, Bill, Kent, uh, Redmond, you know. Great, thank you. And uh, one of the others that I got was about uh, schools. Um, how would you support the Seattle Public Schools? Uh, that's an easy one for me. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. Great question. Because I believe, again, hands-on. I would, you know, go into the school, be, you know, be visible. I, want, I don't want to be a mayor that's untouchable. You know, I don't want to be a mayor that's unreachable. I want I'm, I'm, I want to in the regards of what your ethnicity is or whatever the case may be, I want to be your mayor. So that's what I would do uh, with the public schools. I would be involved. I would go, you know, set out a date and, and whatever. And, and not just me, but, you know, let's get a team and, you know, let's go volunteer and show the diversity in the support of your school. Because you just, just know what really, really makes a difference when, when kids or people, adults, can actually you and put the hands on you, you be involved and uh, with them. And so that what I would do with the public school, I would definitely be more involved and visible and be very, very supportive of that. And because I don't believe in, I mean, I know we got, got to say in a failing school, but if a teacher has went and qualified herself or administrator to be there, I mean, why should any, any school be what you call a failing school? And if other schools don't need all of the resources that they have, you know, like for instance, they got so much resources, they got a pool and a tennis court now, when other schools don't have the best of books or the best like science class or something because they can't afford it. So yeah. Great, thank you. 
And that brings us close to time. So uh, would you like to go ahead and give a one minute wrap up? Well, uh, the, the, yes, I was gonna say I don't need a minute, but well, yeah, it was very great. Um, th thank you for reaching out to me, number one. It was a great honor and a privilege and a pleasure. And I just would like an opportunity to be your mayor, someone who will work with you and back up what I say. Uh, I, I'm not a career politician. I, uh, again, want to be the mayor that I think Seattle can be a great city that other cities can follow as long as we work together and want to succeed like they wanted to succeed and going to the moon back in the 60s and like Nehemiah wanted them to succeed way, way before then. So that would be my wrap up and thank you so much. Thank you so much.